It's very well known in research that fathers are vital to children's welfare, whether together with the mother or not. We looked at mothers' reports of how well their children were doing after separation, and this, essentially the story was exactly the same, that the children who saw more of their fathers, who had frequent and regular contact with their fathers, who were who felt close and involved with their fathers were doing much better in terms of adjustment. I mean, there's a completely clear, unequivocal pattern of results. Back in the 70s, um, their whole objective is to, is to create a society uh, where women don't actually need men, um, whereby they can raise their children and if they want the man there, they can have him there, and if they don't, he can just disappear and it's a society that we're slowly moving into. Um, it's not a very healthy one um, because children don't, as a rule, benefit from a, a single parent family. They're usually worse off as a result of not having a father. It's not to say that there's not single mums out there not doing a good job, I'm not saying that, but all the evidence in terms of health, education, prospects, that sort of thing, um, childbirth, you know, when you get teenage pregnancies and all the rest of it, most of that comes from a single parent setup. Um, so it's not healthy for society, but the radical feminists, that is a society that are pushing us into. And heaven knows what this is doing for children. Children need to have men and women in their lives. If you can look at all the family tax credit systems and that type of thing, and payments to encourage uh, the childcare facilities and that sort of thing, then obviously that's the route that they're taking. Um, and if it appeals to women, and women have been told and brainwashed over the years that you've got to go back out to work, and they have been brainwashed, um, and there's all these childcare facilities as well, um, then you end up with a society that's, that's moving along that line of its own volition. I worked in the part referral unit, which was a unit where children were expelled from school, and every child apart from one come from a broken home, and that was quite scary. That, this, that could be my child or my children in that unit in five years' time. But the police, government and businesses like the NSPCC all want to reduce the involvement of men in children's upbringing, and so they deny the importance of fathers. What have we become that we allow this system to continue when we know the damage that it's doing? It breaks our hearts, destroys our children, it's ruinous for society, it makes the culture vulgar and perverse. It costs a fortune, and it flies in the face of everything we know as humans. It's precisely because of the damage to society that results from the forced removal of fathers that this system exists. Wait till your father gets, until your father gets, wait till your father gets home. One of the main reasons that fathers are so important to upbringing is that men are generally far better at disciplining children than women. You could be the baddest mama on earth, I don't give a fuck how good you are. Ain't nothing you can say more powerful than, I'm gonna tell you, daddy. Can't fuck with it. Can't come close to, I'm gonna tell you, daddy. This is certainly not about hitting children. It's about knowing how to be firm, but fair, and setting boundaries. My son is nine years old. He's uh, 10 next birthday, and he can already walk all over his mum. Uh, but he can't do that with me, and I don't have to raise my voice at him. I just have to look at my son, and he knows that, uh, He's pushed it too far and he won't push it any further, so there's no smacking, there's no basically shouting, it's just a look. Well, he hasn't got that with the mum, he can walk all over her. But well-disciplined children don't become criminals, don't become vulnerable to abuse, and don't need government intervention. This is bad news for a long list of agencies. The discipline provided by men doesn't just apply to his own children. The positive influence of men extends to all children they come across, but this influence has been ceaselessly eroded, such that now, Men are considered suspect for showing any interest whatsoever in children and their welfare. You got a light? You gotta be kidding me. Total, look at this kid. Jesus Christ, what are you, 13? And you're getting high? You're not gonna give us a lecture, are you? No, not a lecture, a life lesson. We're primed by the negative activities of the NSPCC and the government to actually expect aberrant behavior from men around children, and so any accusation is readily believed. In self-defense, men are forced to distance themselves from children for fear of what they may be accused of. Just put the joint down, kid. Just give me a light, old man, or I'll tell my daddy put your hand on my knee. Problems with uh, children today is because adults have distanced themselves to such an extent 
and are, so, are too scared anyway to get too close to them, the children aren't being fed the right information. They're having to discover it for themselves. There's no one to, to be close enough to lead them through the emotional situations, to, to guide them closely, and they're seen as uh, they're, they're kind of objects. They're distant from a man's point of view. Children are kind of distant objects unless they happen to have their own. And so, in a sense, we're no we're no nearer than we were in the Victorian era. If you see what I mean, you see children around you in the streets, uh, maybe getting up to mischief, maybe don't, maybe playing truant. Nobody says anything. Um, Jimmy Bulger wasn't he? he? Was walked out of the middle of the shopping centre, and uh, so you have little Jimmy Bulger, the two boys who eventually killed him walking around the street during school hours, who said anything? The alienation of men from children. What, what me, for men to feel safe around children, the best thing that they can do is to be cold and distant. And that's exactly what they've become. Men have become cold and distant to a large extent. From, so, for example, teachers, male teachers won't go near the children. You, they will stand, they'll be rigid. And so children grow up thinking, God, men are cold and distant. And they are. They have to be, for their own protection. And I, as a male, resent that very deeply. And I think a lot of men do as well. And um, they're angered by it. And a lot of boys um, have missed out as a result of that, boys in particular. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, um, uh, it's a double whammy for them, because if they haven't got the male role model, and they haven't got the affection, they're missing a lot. Hence all the delinquency. Hence. The, 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 almost the psychopathy in our society. The government and charities want themselves to be the only agencies involved in child protection instead of the most appropriate and the most effective child protector on the planet, men. Perversely, by removing men from protecting children, they create much larger numbers of children in need of protection. This should be ironic, but it's actually great for business. Both girls and boys need the guidance and example of their fathers, but in different ways. Girls need the example of a man and father. I got a little baby girl, right? And it's amazing when you have a girl, you're, you're a man, you have a, a girl. It's an eye-opening. Because I realize I'm the man in her life. And my relationship with my daughter is going to affect her relationship with men for the rest of her life. And every man in here is dated a woman with some daddy issues. Boys need discipline and someone to look up to. The average 13-year-old boy is stronger than his mum, but he's not stronger than his dad. On a fundamental level, boys need to know that their parent is stronger than them. There's less and less control in families because quite often they're single parent families. Uh, you haven't got a dad there to keep control, and I don't care what anybody says. When you've got a young man coming up to 16, 17, 18 in the house, you need a father there to keep him in line. Um, even my sister, who had been a single mum for years, uh, very anti-male, uh, I don't need a bloke uh, and all that sort of tosh. Of uh, course, when her boy got to 16 or 17, she actually said to me, I never thought I'd say this to you, Steve, she said, but I could really do with a man in the house just to keep him in line. This is why Childline and other NSPCC activities and government child services are so insidious. They seek to usurp the father as head of the household and the main authority in the family and replace him with external forces. Threaten to phone child services. <laughs> Why? Because if you phone child services, they'll come and take your dad away and he'll get in trouble. You won't even have to call. Just pretend it'll scare the shit out of him. <clears throat> You're 10 years old? You figure out how to scare the shit out of your dad? That's like finding kryptonite. <laughs> These agencies want to prevent discipline being applied to children and prevent families from solving their own problems. This leads directly to family breakdown and wayward children which is precisely what they depend on for their business. Mothers assist in this process of family destruction by failing to understand how they're being used against fathers. What, what does the government gain from demonising men in this way? I think at the very back of all this, at the very early days of the feminist movement, was a concept from women who were in the movement that the family should be deemed the mother and the children that was the family unit and as far as they were concerned fatherhood was expendable and slowly as the, the laws become, became slanted towards women and children the concept came about that women would go out to work and the state would provide uh, a, a 
childcare for the children. And in a sense, that is lingering behind everything that's even going on today. Single parent mothers are encouraged to go out to work and find other alternatives for their children. There is no concept that a childless father is far more likely to become an adolescent criminal than a two parent, a fathered and mothered child. And that if the father has, is not in the family, why on earth should the mother then desert her children and be forced out to work?